Speaking of black women and YouTube, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. What is he in, now? He talked about trans people and versus black people on his special, which I haven't seen yet, but I saw little clips. He also talked about ancient civilizations in there. I would just like to point that out a little bit. <laughs> I haven't seen either. Either apparently there was a big Netflix staff meeting before it came out, and then the CEO was like, "Yo, guys, Dave said some stuff. Prepare for some backlash." Well, speaking of that, on Friday, Netflix said it had fired an employee for disclosing confidential financial information. <laughs> I don't think this was said in the headlines I saw about Netflix firing the person. So I saw Netflix workers had a walkout, I believe. Uh, I think it was mainly trans people uh, because I don't really know the specifics of what Chappelle said, but the, the, the gist of the joke was, um, I don't know, I think it was along the lines of certain groups getting different responses to like bigotry than other groups of so, like trans versus black people getting treated differently with bigotry. And that's actually funny because did you hear anything about the the Raiders coach? No. The Raiders coach was fired. Raiders is a football team. Uh, fired slash resigned because of emails uh, he sent in 2011 that were derogatory towards uh, gay people and also some, some black people as well. Uh -huh. And the first thing that came out was derogatory things towards a black dude. And there wasn't a whole lot of hubbub. And then homophobic stuff came out, and there was a lot of hubbub about it. You know, that reminds me of a, I wonder, the Breakfast Club or something. Well, someone was on there. I don't know. Maybe Dorian posted it a while ago. Shut this up. guy was saying, like, what was he saying? He was like, you know, uh, Joe Biden, when, um, when, when Joe Biden first became president, there was like a lot of like anti-trans like stuff going on. So Joe Biden made an executive order that made it like a federal crime to like discriminate or like do hate kinds against hate crimes against trans people. And then like those old Asian people started getting beating up, getting beat up. And then Joe Biden did the same thing. He was like, hate crimes against uh, Asian people are, are federal crimes. And then like kids started getting shot and like, Black kids started getting shot and like beat up by police. That was in the media again. And Joe Biden didn't do anything. I was like, huh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all bigotry should be treated the same. I say that before I start to talk about a, a article that probably sensationalizes groups, after, groups versus groups. I think that was part of what some people were saying about what Chappelle was saying because he was like, it's not trans versus black. It's kind of just bigotry all around but netflix fired someone because they apparently disclosed financial information about what it paid for dave Chappelle's comedy special the closer which some has condemned as being transphobic it's from ap news how much money though <laughs> damn let me guess I, I don't have a number didn't he get paid like or he turned down like no oh, this is just a number like 50 million or something but back in comedy central yeah or recently Back in the day, like uh, the, the Comedy Central thing, where he was, he walked away from the show because I don't know whatever reasons he did. Probably a lot of money. Yeah, and then <sighs> the thing. he had a yeah, special so about that too. Probably, probably they probably shouldn't have done that. Now they don't have a job. The employee who wasn't named shared confidential, commercially sensitive information outside the company. I don't know if this is the same person that they're saying was fired that started the the walkout. Um, the company said, we understand this employee may have been motivated by disappointment and hurt with Netflix, but maintaining a culture of trust and transparency is core to our company, said Netflix. The statement, oh, here we go, some money, dude. <laughs> the statement said the information was referenced in a Bloomberg News article, which reported that Netflix spent $24.1 on The Closer, which is Chappelle's special, I believe, which first aired last week. The article also mentioned the lower budgets for 2019 special, a Bo Burnham special, and the nine-episode hit Squid Game. I don't know if this is the same 
people that got fired. But that's also, it seems like you're leaking some money out there. Netflix just got that money. The single person admitted that they downloaded and shared sensitive company information externally. Well, why would you admit it? <laughs> yeah. Come on, dude. Was All it right. worth it? Like, Dave still got paid. People, <laughs> people are still going to watch it. Well, I'll probably watch it more. I still haven't yeah. seen it. It's probably hilarious. I don't know. And like, I, I also, definitely it's guess... fucking comedy too. Like of all the things, it's not like a fucking controversial documentary about trans people. No, it's a fucking comedy show. Sure. Yeah. The co the comedy line is always something that's interesting thought experiment too. There is a one of those omelet short movies. It was a five minute one about a dude on a date with a girl, and they're doing funny jokes, and he did a a, a black joke. Um, and she was like, oh, that's just, you can't do that. We, we're not going on a second date. And then they go outside and then a black dude comes up to her and, uh, and before <clears throat> he says anything, she's like, no, I don't have any money. I'm sorry. <laughs> she keeps on interrupting him. It says, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then he's like, no, I'm just, I'm asking for directions. <laughs> and, and the guy's like, yeah, it's just over there, dude. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, yeah. that's good dark racial humor, you know? That's really how it be though. Um, yeah, there there was an angle that people were saying where it's like Chappelle was making it black versus trans. There's obviously a, a Venn diagram of trans and other races that exist. I get that angle too, but oh, damn, dude, can we just like can we just let Dave Chappelle just do his thing? <laughs> I mean, this is Chappelle. He just seems like the like the least like threatening guy. Like, he I mean, he's like kind of old. Old. <laughs> he might he has a wife. He, might, he has his sons. He might have some older mentalities. I don't know. No one probably respects that man less than his wife. I'm just putting that out there. Isn't his wife Asian? Yeah. Oh come on! What are we doing here? <laughs> I remember one time he was on stage and he was like making very mild, soft jokes, like lobs about his relationship. And every time he would say something, he would like look over at a portion of the audience and like smile as if looking <laughs> for approval. And I know he was looking at his wife. I just know. Are you sure, are you sure it was approval or it was a, a, a smile? Of, yeah, I'm, yeah, I know, I know. No, 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 I know, I know. And it's because it was kind of like, I don't know. Hmm. Kind of like, oh, are you laughing, honey? Oh, you're not? Okay, I'll go softer. Hmm. I get I that. Like, like this. <laughs> I mean, by the balls. I mean, I get that. If you if you're a super public comedian and you probably don't want to do a whole lot of jokes on your family life, he probably on cheated people. on her after they had kids, and he's afraid to lose her, so he's walking on eggshells. Or they have a, a lovely like, relationship, like J. Cole, J. Cole, and Kevin Hart. Let me see this clip, Dave. Come on. It's just going to be a bunch of talking heads about it. I want to see the clip, TV. Show me the clip. I think Twitter might have it. But that was, that's going to be in social media headlines for about a week or so. And, you know, that's what happens. You know, uh, I got the sauce. Are people really actually upset? Or is it just Hollywood that's upset? It, you know, that's that's a great point. A lot of... A lot of I forget what specific topic that someone brought up about that um but a lot of things do seems to be just kind of media driven headlines just hollywood sucking each other off all the news outlines. not even not even just hollywood but i mean you gotta make headlines not even just hollywood but there's some things that people get even just like politics like people get mad about like three things generically over politics if you ask like oh what's your position on this and then you're like okay so then you're this category and so you're like wait why are you why is that the specific thing that you're conditioned to have a really strong opinion about? Sure, it might be a, a good opinion or a, 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 a consequential thing in society, but it's very specifically these four things. My favorite thing about Hollywood is how they can have like an award show and 15 people in a row can make a speech about anti-bigotry, anti-racism, save the climate, everybody's equal. And then there's literally abject poverty outside the Greek theater or wherever they're having the award show. It's literally the slums of India on the streets of Hollywood, and no one gives a fuck. But they're on TV talking about how we got to change the world. 
and help yeah, they, the... could, they could have a, a solid solid organization of a uh, Hollywood versus homeless or something. I'm just like I'm just like dude, nice. you, you know where you are? A nice soup kitchen in the name. Maybe it's cuz people that watch those shows online or on TV don't like see where it's like filmed and stuff. I'm like, dude, there's literally a tent city right outside and you're going to walk right past that and get into your limousine and go into the hills and party. Grab grab a little local consciousness first, you know. Yeah. Um, but no, people people don't care that much. Yeah. Oh well. It could pretty easily, you know. Once you get yeah. in a position of power, maybe they do care, and I'm just a, I'm just a hater. You know, a lot of people probably aren't gonna like publicize it. Maybe they do have a solid Hollywood soup kitchen, and they're like, "Hey, I'm doing what I do. I'm, I don't. I mean, I'm helping out these kids on on the internet. Can suck one." Yeah. Damn. It'd be a, a fun, elite. a solid, very uh, in depth journalism report to see if people of Hollywood have funds going towards things they talk about on. When's the last time you really watched an award show, though? You, they're, they're, they're still talking about things. I haven't watched an award show forever. I see clips and it's just like, it'll just be like Robert De Niro gets on stage with Michelle Obama and they're like, like eating each other's ass in front of like, I shouldn't do that on TV. The crowd. And Obama's like, oh, honey, don't do that, please. Let it's me see if I can play this Chappelle clip on Twitter, if it's a, a relevant clip. Now, I am not saying that to say that trans women aren't women. I am just saying that those pussies that they got, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's not pussy, but that's like beyond pussy or impossible pussy. You know what I mean? It, it tastes like pussy. That's not quite what it is, is it? It's not blood. That's beet juice. So a little bit, solid bit. You know, it's interesting that maybe not so much with Chappelle. It sounded like the crowd was thoroughly enjoying what he was saying. But like when I go to smaller shows, like open mics, the crowd goes crazy when the person goes like against the grain of what like mainstream hot Hollywood believes they'll be like, if somebody like hopped on stage and was like, yeah, I, I voted for Trump. Fuck it. Everyone would just erupt in laughter, but you would never say that on like Jimmy Kimmel, you know, because you'd be escorted out of the studio. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, you can't say most things on, on TV that you could say in a club. But like when you're just like not famous, you just like go crazy, I guess. That's why I kind of like uh, not famous comedians because most of them are awful, but like they're hungry. I still, I still believe that, especially comedians, even famous ones, just will say whatever they want. I, I yeah. we've had the conversation about comedians and like TV late night comedians, but that's not. Comedy. I don't. I I, I I think Kevin Hart does not say a lot anymore. That's if a, you compare his new true. comedy to his yeah. old one, Kevin Hart barely swears. I wouldn't. Anymore. You, you wouldn't put Kevin Hart in the group of like comedians. Comedians, though. I would because like he's a, of, he's a working cats, comedian of the cats that are like podcasting and and things. Those Kevin Hart is a podcast. Like, Kevin Hart's just famous. And he's more so than the the circle of comedians that are famous. Famous. Like, yeah, well, I Kevin I, Hart is is a uh, is a family friendly version of Chappelle's famous but Chappelle would still go to to whatever that club in LA is that that most famous comedians go to Kevin Hart probably not Kevin Hart goes to like small clubs like all over the country and just like works out material sure. you know, I feel like he cares about the craft I'm not saying he's not a comedian but I'm saying he's a he's a superstar comedian that does movie things you know it's like it's like is 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 Dwayne the Rock Johnson a wrestler yeah but he's also now a, a movie person you know yeah i don't know there's a there's a group of wrestlers you got your roman reigns and your john cena is kind of not really like john cena Wait, like, so you're I'm saying like the, oh, so the group of comedians that you're talking about you say that 
you feel that they can still say whatever they want. Yeah, those are the people that people on the internet get mad about for a week. Uh, I don't think they can say whatever they want. Especially when there's like deals and money involved, you know, when they're just like, I get this much, I get paid this much from comedy, but I'm going to get paid three times as much from this HBO show. I better like not do anything to fuck it up. They'll take deals from you like that. Sure, sure. But if you're like somebody, like, I don't know, I can't name a comedian off the top of my head that literally doesn't care about money and they're just like, I don't even want to get famous. I don't want to have a podcast. I don't want to have a Twitter. I just want to, there's probably a couple of those and we don't know them for that reason. I just want to do comedy just to do comedy. If somebody says, yo, you want to be on a show? I'll say, fuck them. I just want to do comedy. Like maybe those guys, but like nobody knows them because they don't like. You think there's there's rock star comedians without social presence? Internet? I wouldn't call them, maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't call them like rock stars because they're not famous, but they're probably, they can probably kill it on stage. They just they make a living off comedy. I don't know if they make, because you, because I imagine comedy doesn't pay that much you have to unless be famous. you're famous. Yeah. Like, I don't know if there's like a Louis C.K. who's out there that's unknown that is probably potentially staying under the radar. There, there's, pr- I don't know if there's someone that's like, I'm purposely not getting mainstream famous because I just love the craft so much. And I could, because it, it could just kind of means you go on a press run and you have good friends and you can, I don't know, make a name for yourself online. But I'm, I'm sure there's, there's there's killers in the comedy scene that aren't famous. Yeah, like you think they're like I st- trying to I, not be famous. Like they're just no. Like, I think they're trying. <laughs> huh. But there's there's yeah. funny, there's funny cats that pop up on like TikTok has it has some algorithms for comedy. Yeah, <sighs> I hate TikTok. But you got you know I don't know. You gotta like put an effort to be famous. Like it's a different kind of effort than just working on a comedy craft. Yeah, I like if you if you're doing comedy and you're also like, all right, I want to also try to write a TV show. You're like putting an effort to like elevate your career, you know? Yeah. But if you're just like, I'm just gonna do comedy, I don't want to do anything else. I feel like maybe. But I do think that I think podcasting is a natural progression for people trying to make a network for themselves that are in comedy rather than. Because before you always had the comedy and the natural progression was to to be on like a sitcom or something back mm-hmm. in the 90s and stuff. But I think instead of doing comedy and like a writer for something, a lot of people are just like, let me work up on, on my brand and then have a podcast that I can monetize with just me working out <laughs> thoughts that I can use in bits. Yeah. The comedy podcast. The comedy podcast. How many podcasts comedy. we got? Is this, is this Google? How many? Comedy. So you think there's any comedians out there that are like, if HBO is like, hey, guy, hey, man, we think you're really funny. We want to pay you $10 million to be in this show written by fucking uh, who knows because we think you're hilarious. Mm-hmm. But stop saying rape jokes. Do you think someone's like, nah, dude, I want to I keep saying those jokes. You can keep the money. There's definitely a percentage of people that would do that. Like mm-hmm. Jesselnik is is kind of mainstream famous, and he has a more uh, darker humor. Yeah, just Jesselnik is interesting, but I bet you, and I could be wrong about this, because of his jokes, you're not going to see him on many other things. Yeah, but he probably made a conscious decision to be. I like this <laughs> kind of comedy that is very violent for some topics i don't know if it's violent but very 